Okay, so let's just um, get some introductions. Just okay. For the record. I am Bev Smith, and most people remember me from Black Entertainment Television's Our Voices. And before that, they remember me from Miami with WGBS. And I used to come over here all the time. I'm a nationally syndicated talk show host and an activist. The activist should come first, I should say. I'm an activist that happens to be a talk show host. Wonderful. Okay, now, Ms. Smith, let's talk about, I know... Um, one of the things that you've been particularly passionate about is the Clifton site here yes. in Nassau. Um, talk about your involvement. You were here 14 years ago. Give us an idea. Give us some history on your connection to that site. Well, 14 years ago, I launched a nationally syndicated show on the American Urban Radio Networks. And one of the executives was here talking with a friend of mine. You might know Debbie Bartlett. And uh, I had introduced them. And he met Code Smith, and Code started telling him about it, and told him about a man by the name of Vivian Wiley. And when the executive came back, he said, Bev, this is like right up your alley. There's a man that, and he told me all about it. I said, I have to talk to Code, Attorney Smith, and I have to meet Vivian Wiley. So Code and I started conversating, as the kids say, talking back and forth. And then I put Vivian Wiley on the show, who told the story. And that is when I made up my mind. I had to see. Because if you haven't been to Gory Island, to me, this has the same significance. So if you haven't been to Africa to see where we launched from, you should come to the Bahamas to see where we landed and where the spirit of the people here got them to freedom. In America, we accept a lot of the things that happen to us. We don't hunt for our history. We don't even know the history, many of us. I don't want to blanket every single black person because we're not myopic. But we don't even look for our ancestors. We don't look for our ancestors in our family. Like if you say to a young kid in school, what did your grandfather do? He doesn't know. True story. I'm giving a speech on Martin Luther King's birthday. And I say to the kids, who was Martin Luther King? And they say, one little boy raised his hand, oh, 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 Miss Beth, oh, 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 Miss Beth, I know, I know, he was at my house last night. He dates my mama. Child, we got a lot of work to do. Okay, back to the point. That's what I experienced. When I came to Clifton, and I brought a group of people as diverse as you can be. Sheila Frazier, who is in the movie Superfly, who has her own company. I bought a Jewish rabbi. I bought a Presbyterian photographer. I bought politicians. I wanted to see. When I touched the ground, something happened to me. But when I went in the cave <coughs> and I saw the staircase, I, I, every time I talk about it, I get a chill because I felt like I was being transported. And something happened. We were, when we went to look at the beginning of the cage, because the cave, because it's like carved like Africa, the wind blew. But you didn't hear the wind. You just felt it. And it was not cold. It was warm. It was like a, it was like a kiss. And I hadn't been kissed in a long time, so I really appreciate it. <laughs> I really appreciate it. But I was kissed by my history. I was embraced by my culture, and I did not feel like a stranger in a strange land. I was not the ugly American. I was returning to where perhaps my people, because my, my people were a mixture of North Carolina, South Carolina, Arkansas, and migrated to Virginia and then to Pennsylvania. How do I know you're not related to me? So when I was there, I felt the connection, and I said to Code, what Ever I can do. I want to do. And so I did as much as I could do, and the newspaper said I was on the take. I keep telling the attorney, where's my check? <laughs> if I was on the take. Fourteen years later, I'm thinking this is a national historic park. I'm thinking cruise lines are sending their people there to see what was going on. And when I get there, first of all, I was just thrilled because now there's a park there. It's a historic park there, and uh, what the plantation is now a gift shop, and um, 
and we have tour guides. It was thrilling. And the place that I will remember, and I want Americans to go see, is where the women are, where the artists carve the women into the tree, and they're all facing different ways, looking to see if someone will come and rescue them from Africa and take them back home. And so I think this is a very spiritual occasion. Now, when I heard what I heard, when I heard it, so what did you hear, Miss Bill? First of all, I get very angry that what people of, of African descent do, taken away from us in our country, Alexander Graham Bell and the telephone. He was deaf. He created it, but a black man and put the transmitter in so you can hear me right now. So I'm tired of that. And when I heard about Mr. Lewis Bacon and what he was saying, and we watched the tape, my executive producer, Brooke Titus, and I, I said, oh, ho, 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 ho. let me call him, okay? So I called Mr. Bacon. And, you know, I just called up and said, hello. <laughs> they hung up on me the first time. Well, I don't, maybe they didn't. They like to say that I got disconnected. But do you get disconnected twice? I got disconnected, disconnected, sent around, sent around, and ended up with their PR firm. And I said to them that I'm a radio personality, and I'm with the Empowerment Radio Network, and that we heard, and that Mr. That Attorney Code Smith called Mr. Bacon a liar. That's very strong language in America. It's very strong language around the world. And I wanted him to respond to the charges. Because if he wasn't lying, and what was he lying about? Mr. Smith told us that Mr. Bacon said that he had been involved in the movement. I was here. I never met the man. I, I, that doesn't mean he wasn't there. But I didn't sense that he was involved with the local people. That kind of ticked me off. So I extended time to him. I said, look, Mr. Attorney Smith was on the show for an hour. We want Mr. Bacon. We don't want anyone else but Mr. Bacon because Mr. Bacon is the one that saw it. He said, well, I think that Mr. Attorney Smith has a misunderstanding. I said, well, I don't because I saw the tape and I heard it. So the rearrangement was that he was to be on our show in a pre-taped interview. And first they called and said, well, they couldn't do an hour. And so, <laughs> sorry, colored folks, <laughs> we can't give you the time. And so, I I just was a little bit disturbed by that. So I said to him, "You need to understand that the world is changing, and that my mission is to connect the dots, connect the African dots to form a picture." Okay. So you need to respond to that. Because if you don't, then there will be a movement with people in America to help the Bahamian people tell their story their way. History is your story. The Bahamas with Clifton is the Bahamian story, the African Bahamian story. And then we went to a history museum here, the Historical Society. Well, first of all, where's the story of the Bahamians? And did I hear that the natives were completely wiped out? So Mr. Bacon has a history here. And I'm wondering, well, my good friend, a former older woman, Dorothy Tillman from Chicago, went after the companies in Chicago that had slave trade. I would say that what we probably need to do as investigators, as news people, for the truth, since Mr. Bacon has not responded to us, we need to look into the history of where he is. And then we can determine whether he lied deliberately, and then we can ask for what reason. I'm committed. This is a place that I'm not a stranger to. So I promise you that I will do everything I possibly can to see that no one tells the story of Clifton, but the Bahamian people that were there. Okay, so can you give us an idea of what else did Mr. Bacon say that, that really bothered you? Well, Mr. Bacon was at uh, the Audubon Society. By the way, Audubon was a black man. And he was addressing the audience because he had uh, won the award. And in his enthusiasm, as he was opening up the statement, he was thanking them and he said, and he said, and I subscribe to the Bible. 
So we're thinking, and I'm paraphrasing, we're thinking that it is the Holy Bible. And he said it was holy. Guess what his Bible is? Gone with the wind. So I'm very anxious to talk to him. Because why would he say that's the Bible? So if that is his Bible, does that mean he's for slavery? And if he is for slavery, and if he is for containment, another thing he said was, uh, talking about property, and again I'm paraphrasing, he said something about, when I control something, I control something. And I, when I have land, I, I control it. And I'm thinking, ding, 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 ding. Is this about redevelopment again? Is this about who will control that valuable piece of land? And then I've always been ticked off that the people who did the film Jaws didn't come back and clean up their mess. So I have a lot of questions to ask Mr. Bacon. And particularly I'm interested and we're going to look into his pedigree. Because whatever you are, whatever you come from is what you are. So if your daddy had slaves then you have a mentality toward Africans in America and Africans around the world because we need to connect the dots. That means you might have some problems too. Why won't you talk to me? I bet if my name was Diane Sawyer. I'm not sure he would talk to Oprah either. Remember, the big store in New York told her, I don't care who you are, you can't shop here. So we just, if he's listening, if he has people listening, I know he has a home here, Oh, Mr. Bacon, come on down. Let's talk. You t- you touched briefly on the need for there to be um, a greater connecting of the dots. Um, you know, some more of a a kinship between you know blacks that live in the United States, Africans that live here. Uh, why is that so important um, for young people, for older people, for all you know persons of African descent in particular? Because it's nation time. And we are one. Now, we don't have to argue that anymore. White anthropologist, white geneticist, they found the DNA. They found the oldest living human being. They found the relic. The bones were put together. The DNA was found. They called her Eve, and she was from Africa. We do know that the Garden of Eden, Africa, that the remnants of Noah's Ark, Africa. And you can say Egypt. And you can say Israel, it's all on the continent of Africa. We are Africans. And everywhere we go, we are denied the privilege of saying that we come from the oldest, richest culture. Now, let me go a little bit further because I'm spiritual. The word says that we were created in his image. And the word says that Jesus had skin like leather, hair like wool. Come on now. What is that? Skin like bronze, okay? What is that? But a man of color, when you go to Israel, you see the real Hebrews, uh, not the European Hebrews that were transported. So I think that it's time, because no one loves us. I don't care whether we're African in London. I get calls from them. I've had them come and do my show. No one loves us. We're divided on the continent of Africa. The Chinese are there, the Japanese are there, and a and a partridge and a pear tree. Everyone is there but us. It's hookup time. When I look at you, I see my cousin. When you look at me, I know you see somebody that looks like me. Okay? So let us connect the dots. We have enough money in the United States. We are a contributor to the economy in the United States as Africans in America in the billions of dollars. None returns back to us. So, Mr. Businessman, you have a company that does toilet tissue and paper towels. There's got to be somewhere in here in Nassau that does that. Hook up, hook up, hook up, and build our nation. Everyone else does. My friends who are Irish, and my great-grandfather was Irish, will celebrate St. Patrick's Day. They will paint a shamrock down the middle of America. We had to fight to get Martin Luther King's holiday. There's a Christopher Columbus holiday. Biggest lie ever told. But if you are in school and you say, who discovered America? And you say, they came before Columbus. You'll fail that course. You will fail that course. So I just, um, I just think that it's now or never. This is a perfect time. A perfect time. And you see if we were organized and united around the world as Africans. Hello, Mr. Obama. The Republicans couldn't do nothing to you, honey. 
We would be like the Jewish lobby. We would be like the Spanish-speaking lobby. We would be like the Arab lobby. Your brothers would have your back. So we need to get organized so around the world, brothers can have our back. One of the things you, you mentioned in, in, in talking earlier was that there, there seemed to be also a need to involve the cruise ships. Um, we're talking about the Clifton. Yeah, again. yeah. Um, to involve the cruise ships to make it more of a touristic. Oh, I think um, that's evident. Draw. Yeah. What, what, are your, what are your suggestions in that? Well, first of all, just look at how many blacks come to the islands on a regular. When I lived in Miami, my daughter and I used to get on a cruise. You could come here for $99. I don't know how much it is now. So we just come over, spend a day come back on a Saturday, come back that night. We never got to meet the people. We went to Paradise Island, because Atlantis wasn't there at the time, and we went around, but we never got to meet the people. All right, you get on a cruise ship, you dock here, they let you off at Bay Street, and technically you go to a shopping center. So I'm thinking that it, it would be a fabulous idea, and also, from a commerce point of view. If there was an agreement between the Department of Tourism here and the cruise lines coming here, and then in every room there would be about the history of Clifton, and then when you come in, there will be a boat that says tours, and you pay your money, reasonable, $10, whatever, and you pay your $10 up there, and you go see what they did to us. But more than ever, You see people who stood up and fought for their freedom, who were not ashamed, who were proud of their history. We need to feel that way in America. So I'm thinking the cruise lines might be a way to do it. I would love to see full buses like they do when they go to the um, uh, Holocaust Museum. Full buses, Arlington. Full buses when they go to Gettysburg, okay? I'd like to see four buses and the tour guide saying, now I'm going to take you around. Ah, I'd like to see that. And so I'm thinking there's there's a missed opportunity there. Okay. Now you've visited the site since you've been back. Oh yeah. Okay. What are some of the things you mentioned? Um, one of your favorite par- portions of the site was the women that were uh, you. Um, uh, what are some of the other things well, that can be incorporated? Well, but when I was standing there, I must say... Um, I've interviewed Nikki Giovanni dozens and dozens and dozens of times, and I have a, a very old album by her. And she said in her poem, and the women wait, okay? And when I stepped onto the platform where they have it and looked at the, the way he carved it, I thought, that's the story of black women wherever we are. We wait. We wait for our children to be given an opportunity. We wait to have a connection, all right? We all say, where did I come from? I don't know where I came from. Adopt. Adopt the Bahamas. Because you see a history there, and you don't know whether you came from there. If you live in North Carolina, South Carolina, you might have been on a plantation. Because the white plantation owners would summer here, and they kept excellent records. You know, like, Bill, Black. Mama, <laughs> whatever, whatever, whatever. They kept excellent records. See what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> That's money. That's someone that came here for the beach and the sun. But there's more to the Bahamas. And the people of the Bahamas should have their story told. So when I was in San Juan, Puerto Rico, there was a tour bus waiting. And they took us to every place there was in terms of history. I want that for Nassau. I want it so badly. Because Clifton now is a part of me. And that cave is holy ground. Now yesterday, I went, or this weekend, I went to see the Queen Steps. Holy ground. Holy ground. Show it. And it's history. You know, slaves digging into a cave. We're not supposed to be that bright, are we? We're not supposed to be the architects. We're not supposed to be the geologist. Because that's what a rock person does. The geologist carves it out. And then I ask one of the tour guides, um, where were the slaves? Show me where this, because he was telling me about Queen Victoria, and I know she freed, and good for her. But I wanted to see where the slaves were. And he told us that there was no signs, because the slaves were, um, they just dropped dead, and people walked over there. But we went down the steps, and there was a man 
who should have his show. He should be going around to all of the schools. His name is Antonio Butler. If you get to interview him, he will have you spellbound. He told us, he showed us where the tomb was. He showed us how they made, um, you look on the wall and it says, there are holes in the wall there. And they told you they made planters for that. Well, there's nothing but limestone. Nothing could grow there. Those were our coding systems in the memory of the people that had died carving out a root so that the guy could take his family to safety. I, I just... I just think that that ought to be shown and it ought to be offered. But if you don't know as a tourist, you can't be blamed for not going. So I'm saying, let the information pour. Let it come through, you know, and let the people see what I saw. So the fact that Mr. Bacon has made these these sort of statements, um, you know, how do you think that locals should be reacting? How do you think that should affect us in terms of um, future movement, in terms of what should happen next? What should happen next is you ought to demand that he respond. I mean, this is advocacy time. Rise up, people of the Bahamas. Rise up and demand that he respond. You know what I mean? I mean, attorney... Smith put himself out by just saying he's lying. Now, he said uh, Robert Kennedy. And if you go to my home in my library, you see various pictures of me and the Kennedys. Robert Kennedy's mother, Robert Kennedy Jr.'s mother, Ethel. You'll see me with her. You'll see a letter from Ted Kennedy, and you'll see John Kennedy, I mean, all that kind of stuff. So I know the family. So I would recognize the Kennedy if I saw one. While I was here, I didn't see one. Doesn't mean he didn't come. So I said to Attorney Smith, "You know, um, Mr. Bacon talked about he and Robert Kennedy doing certain things while they were there. I didn't see that. What did they do, dear? Let Mama Bev know, okay? Well, I don't know. He came for a couple of hours. I came. I saw, and now I want to conquer. I'm not accusing Robert Kennedy." But that's going to be my next telephone call if Mr. Bacon doesn't call me next week. I'm going to call Robert. Because it's there. It's on YouTube. It's not like I'm making this up. I'm just asking them to respond. Okay. Anything else you want to add? Rise up. It's nation time. It's, it's ethnic time. It's time to have a pride. There is nothing. There's nothing here. You, we're in a hotel where there's air conditioning. The cooling system for the air conditioning was done by a black man. And the way you turn the thermostat, the thermostat, the patent to that is in a black man's name. The way the railroad trains are, the engine in the car. So that connects me to you as a Bahamian, and that connects me to you. I am an African. I am an African in America. Rise up, beautiful people. Especially this, let me thank the people of Nassau. I've never seen anything like this, and I've traveled a lot. And in my country, I'm having a conference in August, and I'm asking a 1,000 women, African women, to come and meet me so we can chart a course and devise a plan and take it to the Congressional Black Caucus in September and say, this is what black women want to be able to have for their families. This is what we need. So it's organizing time. It's connecting the dots. That's what it is. And that's what I want to see happen. Thank you, you, Nassau. And, you know, I've never been anywhere where the uh, people who clean your room hug you. I've never been anywhere where the people who clean your room when you get ready to go. Well, can we have a word of prayer? I'm home. Thank you for welcoming me home. Thank you very much.